This week on Fishing 411, we got a two-part salmon adventure. We're going to start out on Platte Bay in Michigan targeting king salmon, then we're going to go all the way to Alaska looking for silvers. You know, we're fishing in Lake Michigan, and most people, when they think of open water basins like Lake Michigan or any Great Lakes body of water, they're thinking their primary piece of electronics has got to be sonar for fish finding capabilities. You know, and in some instances, I would agree with that. But when it comes to trout and salmon, this little piece of equipment right here, I believe, is even more important than sonar. This is my depth probe. This is an X4 uh, by Fishhawk, and basically what it does is it tells me how fast I'm trolling at depth down by my downrigger ball, and it also tells me the water temperature at the downrigger ball. And these are critical things because it's the middle of the summer right now, it's fairly warm outside, and the surface water up here is 68 degrees. 68 degrees on the surface, way too warm for trout and salmon. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for colder bands of water. And the only way to find those is with a temperature probe like the Fishhawk. In this instance right here, I'm fishing in 73 feet of water. That's how far down my ball is. And the water temperature is 46 degrees down that depth. Well, 46 degrees is close to perfect for trout and salmon. That's an excellent water temperature where I expect that trout and salmon are going to concentrate. The next number down here, 2.3, that's my speed. That's how fast I'm going at the ball. In other words, that's how fast my lures are moving at depth. And that's another critical speed because certain kinds of presentations require certain speeds, certain trolling speeds. So this little piece of equipment is a gem. Without it, I'm literally fishing blind. You know, in big bodies of water like Lake Michigan, below the surface, water temperatures are naturally going to get cooler as you go down. But what ends up happening is you get bands of water. And just because you go deeper doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get cooler. Sometimes when you go down, you actually hit bands of warmer water. So with the X4, what we're looking for is we're looking for temperatures that we know from experience tend to concentrate trout and salmon. I'm looking for 46, 47 degrees up to about 50, 51, 52. That's about where I want to be. To me, those are temperatures that have, in my history of fishing, have produced well for me in trout and salmon. Those are temperatures that the fish seem to like and they seem to concentrate on. So I'm watching the depth probe constantly because we'll troll in and out of those ideal water temperatures. So if we troll out of a water temperature, I simply have to raise my ball or lower my ball and find that preferred water temperature again and set up on that. Once I figure that out on one downrigger that has the depth probe on it, it's a piece of cake to do it to my other downriggers as well so I can match the hatch, so to speak, and have all of my riggers fishing in the sweet water. Come on. In the net he is. That's a good looking fish right there. First one in the box. Let's take a look, see what we got here. Looking very much like a coho to me, which is gonna make my wife very happy because she likes silver salmon on the grill. That is a very good start. Nice coho, or what some people call silvers. This one's going in the box and later on my grill. That's the bait right there that got our first coho. It's a plug called a maglip. This happens to be the 4.5 size. Plugs like this, high action, very high wobbling baits are getting very, very popular here in the Great Lakes. And all I did is I let it back on copper line to get it down to depth. And I was fishing that with 300 foot of copper line, so I had it down, oh, between 60 and 65 feet probably. 
know, the wind's blowing around in here pretty good right now, so we're having a hard time maintaining our trolling speed. And we're noticing on the X4 over here that we've lost some trolling speed at depth, so obviously we got to speed up our surface trolling speed. One of the nice things about this BRP kicker back here is that it has a digital speed control. It's a plus and a minus button. If I want to go faster, I push plus. If I want to go slower, I push minus. And it allows me to very carefully adjust my speed and get it just exactly the speed I'm looking for. It's an awesome feature that comes standard on this kicker. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV, Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. You know, earlier we said that we were going to talk about several different pieces of electronics that are critical to trout and salmon fishing. And we started out by talking about the Fishhawks X4. And that's our temperature probe. That's how we're finding water barriers, uh, subsurface water layers that are the right temperature to hold trout and salmon. Well, we're also going to use other pieces of electronics like our sonar unit here in our GPS. Now, I use Lowrance Electronics, and I have pretty much my entire life. And the one that I have on this boat right here is called their HDS series. It's a touchscreen series. I believe that you need the highest quality electronics you can afford because good electronics has high resolution. What does that mean? The ability to mark fish effectively in deep water. We're fishing in well over 100 feet of water, and if I was using an inexpensive graph today, chances are I wouldn't even be marking fish. Now I could look on my sonar screen here, and I see these big hooks behind my sonar. I know I'm on fish. I know those are what I'm looking for. They're trout and salmon. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So when you spend your money on electronics, it's spent wisely to get high quality gear with lots of power, lots of resolution. We're running out of light here. This has been quite the fight here. This is probably gonna be my last fish of the day because we're, we're running out of daylight. The salmon are noted for this. They definitely like to bite in low light. Early in the day, late in the day. I just cannot get this one to turn his head. This puppy doesn't want to give up the ghost. Now this is going to get interesting because I've got a lot of gear back here. There's the diver, the rotator. What I'm going to have to do is choke up on all this. Oh, there he is. He's up a little sideways. That's what it is. That's why he's so strong. And he's in the bucket, all right. And it is indeed a king. Woo! It's a good one. <laughs> oh, let me get this one out of here. Now that's a great way to end the day. One king and one coho. And we caught them both doing the same thing. What we're doing out here is we're looking for temperatures that trout and salmon prefer. In this case, water in the high 40s to the low 50s. We used our fish hawk, we found those temperatures at a certain depth. Today it was about 67 feet. Got our lures in that depth zone, and look what happened. We're rewarded with great fishing. About a year ago, we were blessed to have an opportunity to go to Alaska and fish the Kenai River. Now, if you've never been on the Kenai River, it has a lot to offer the fishermen. People think about it as a king salmon river, but actually there's silvers, there's pinks, there's rainbows, there's dolly vardens. There are a lot of fish to be caught on the Kenai River. Jake, you might have the distinction of being the first person to ever catch a silver on a, on a planer board in Alaska. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that, dude. Oh, look at that coho. It's early morning on the Kenai River in Alaska. Stick around, we'll show you. Hopefully a couple more of these gorgeous fish. 
We've only been on the water for a few minutes and we've already got our first silver in the boat. And no surprises how that fish was caught. It was caught on a plug. And here on the Kenai, that's a very popular presentation. But we did something a little bit different. Brought a little bit of uh, Michigan flavor, so to speak, and added a planer board to the line. This little OR34 mini board, just to get it out to the side a little bit further. First fish comes on the planer board. Kind of a cool thing. Who knows what'll happen, but we know we're gonna catch them on plugs and maybe we're gonna catch a few on boards as well. You know, we're here with Salmon Catcher Lodge, and when you come up here for a fishing adventure, you're going to be experiencing a variety of different kinds of fishing, and you're going to be experiencing a variety of different guides. Salmon Catcher sets their people up every day with a different with a different outfitter, and our outfitter today is Ian. Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate it. Sounds like you're the guy that knows about how to catch silvers. I try. I try. Oh. It's a, every day's a little different. Well, I tell you what, you've been doing great for us so far. We appreciate it. So we're going to catch some silvers, and we're also obviously going to catch some pinks. We're going to be wading through quite a few pinks to get our silvers, yes, sir. And pretty much today is going to be a plug deal, right? Plugs, and we'll probably do a little bit of bouncing eggs All right. at some point, maybe All. cast a couple spinners. All cool stuff. All right, well, great. Well, we're off to a good start. Yes, sir. Stay on it, Mrs. Romanak. Definitely a silver. Definitely a better fighting fish. This is really exciting action, you guys. It, I just, I can't, I can't tell you enough how much fun this is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Keep tight on it, Mrs. Romanek. We're moving now with him. Much easier to reel them in when we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. Yes! Woo! Good job, Mary. This is awesome. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. There's lots of ways that you can catch these fish here in Alaska, but one of the most popular ways is what they call plugging. And there's a variety of different plugs that work very well. Today we we're using two different kinds, one called a quick fish, another one called a maglip, and both of them were doing very well for us. Well, we wrap these plugs mainly because fish key off a of scent, like the salmon, they're mainly keying off a of scent. They are visual biters, but scent definitely does help. So we take sardine, uh, whole sardines, and we fillet them out, and we make, uh, basically make, make a little pair of pants that slides right off of the center belly hook. And you use this, I use an elastic thread wrap. It's real stretchy. Some people use sewing thread. Some people use some, some different brands. But you'll peg it with your, with your thumb, and then you start wrapping. Then you'll cross over your wrap to, to, to lock it down. Then you set the, set the hook over, then wrap the front. I probably go a little overkill on my wrap, so I don't have to re-wrap after every fish. And then right here, to lock in the wrap, you're gonna use a half hitch. I just hold my thumb out here like this, and I come around my thumb, and take the spool and go under it, pull it, under it, pull it. I do that two to three times, and then break it off. And then you have a wrapped quick fish, or a maglip, and it's ready to fish. Things just got pretty crazy. Go. Got it. All right. These fish are absolutely insane. This is something you gotta put on your bucket list. If you've never fished the Kenai, you really owe it to yourself to do this. It's right here, Jakers. All right, nice job, son. That is a big silver. By Lake Michigan standards, where we're at, that is trophy of a lifetime right there. What a sweet fish. What a sweet fish. 
Right there is the reason you come all the way to Alaska and fish the Kenai. That is a beautiful coho, or what they call around here silver salmon. Man, <laughs> what a rush. You gotta come up here and get you some of these. Now one of the things you have to understand if you come to Alaska and fish is you're probably gonna need a guide. And the reason you're gonna need a guide is the Kenai River is one of the most regulated fisheries in the world. You can't simply understand all the regulations. If you're not local here and you don't understand all the different regulations, you're probably gonna get yourself on the wrong side of the law. So having a guide is one of those things, not only is he gonna put you on fish, he's gonna make sure that you're fishing by the rules. It's a thing. You know, when people come all the way to Alaska, they're coming here to catch the stellar species, the, you know, the things like silver salmon and king salmon, no question about it. But there's lots of other species here you can catch. Today, we were entertained with pink salmon. We caught dozens and dozens of them. And in between the silvers, the pinks keep you very much occupied and very much smiling. Well, there's actually two different ways to do this style of fishing. You can fish with a line counter reel, or you can just use a regular bait caster style reel like this. The way you know how deep you're fishing is at home, what you'll do is you'll count how many feet of line per pass. Now what I mean by pass is you have your level line here and each pass is a certain amount of feet. So in your backyard at home, you can go out and you can measure how many feet of line that actually is. That way you could duplicate with what a line counter does. In this case, we have it about 10 feet of pass. So each pass is 10 feet of line. This is a riot. I've done an awful lot of trout and salmon fishing in my life, but I'll tell you, nothing quite like this. This is incredible. Alaska's really living up to its reputation. This looks like maybe this is gonna be a pink, but it is still pulling. Jake, you gonna give me an assist on that one? Thank you, young man. That one's on the maglip. Very good. Thank you, Jake. I don't think there's anybody home on this one. Got a little slow on the ground. Oh, he's still he's there. there. He's, he's there. still there. Let me come back and give you a little help. All right. Oh, yeah, he's not very happy right now. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, there we go. My goodness, they are pretty, aren't they? They are a handful. Well, definitely a mixed bag. More pinks than silvers, but still, um, plenty of silver action, all a guy could hope for. Let's see if we can get this guy unhooked and back in the water. They are delicate, can't keep them out of the water very much. Additional considerations provided by Motor Guide Electric Motors, engineered for anglers, and also by Procure Bait Sense, ruthlessly effective. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service and by Ontario's Algoma Country, that real. The other part about the Kenai that's a standout in my mind is if you get in the upper reaches of the Kenai, you're not so much going to be targeting king salmon or silver salmon. What you're going to be targeting are dolly bardens and rainbows. Now, the way we caught them was bead fishing. If you haven't had a chance to bead fish, it's a little tiny bead with a single hook on it, and it's designed to replicate an individual fish egg floating downstream. It's absolutely deadly. It's a great way of fishing, kind of similar to rolling bottom for a spawn bag, except for you use just one plastic bead. There is a fish. Ooh, baby. Ooh. These are so much fun, especially on these nice steelhead rods, these light action steelhead rods. What a riot. Oh, I have not got any eyes on this one yet. There he is. Nice dog. All right. <laughs> it happened almost like we planned it that way. I'd like to say we planned it that way. Gorgeous. 
One of the other Kenai adventures that we had didn't have anything to do with the Kenai. We actually jumped on an airplane and we flew off to a remote wilderness area and it turned out to be part fishing and part wildlife viewing. And when you see the footage of the brown bears and how close we got to the brown bears, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The scenery was gorgeous, the fishing was good, and the wildlife viewing was absolutely astonishing. You know, if you get a chance to go to Alaska and you get a chance to fish in the Soldatna area, you're going to want to check out Salmon Catcher Lodge. We had an awesome time there, fished a lot of different ways, caught a lot of different fish, had a great time. Check it out, you'll be glad you did. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology. Yakima Bait, home of the rooster tail. Maxima Fishing Lines, the best line every time. Evinrude Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2. Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line. Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition. Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest. Smooth moves, smooth your ride. Um, the way to check all that out is to go through an outfitter like what we did. Salmon Catcher Lodge will hook you up on the right guides so that you're in the right stretches of the river, doing the right things at the right time of year. We're going to get a quick picture and and get her back in the water where she belongs. Wow.